Hey there, Nick Chitakis here. In this video, we're gonna go over some of the components to Dockerize an application, as well as some of the advantages of using Docker Compose to help pull things together. I imagine this will be a pretty quick video. Basically, we're gonna go over, you know, some things to think about when it comes to Dockerizing your application. Because I don't know about you, but typically when I'm developing a web app, it's a lot more than just creating a very simple Docker file and we're done. There's all sorts of different things to think about. For example, sure, we do need to set up an environment for running whatever web application you're running here. In this case, you know, it's an example example, Docker Flask app here, but I have one for Rails, Django, Node, and Phoenix. Maybe your stack is a little bit different, but yeah, so you have this idea of a programming runtime environment, right? With a Flask application, it's using Python under the hood. So you got to get a specific version of Python set up, and then you need to install some of your dependencies, some packages that your application uh, might be using, right? You know, typically you can use something like UV or PIP, or if you're using, you know, maybe you have a Rails app that could be using Bundler there to install all that stuff. And then in addition to that, though, it's like to even install those uh, application dependencies, maybe you need to also install some system level dependencies too, right? Maybe, you know, if you're on a Linux system, you might need to apt install, you know, something like a Postgres uh, driver or something like that, whatever you need to get your application up and running. Maybe you're doing some image processing, stuff like that, right? And that stuff is going to vary de depending on what operating system that you're using. But still, you know, at this point, we're really just talking about like, okay, these are the things that my direct application needs to be up and running. Great. You can definitely make a, a Docker file for that to get all those things set up. And then your application will be able to be bootable and then it's good to go. But, you know, as I mentioned before, typically with a web app, I don't know about you, but it's a lot more than just that little uh, web service running. I shouldn't say little, it could be a big application. But here in this case, you can see, you know, we're also running a background worker to process tasks asynchronously. And then we also have a Postgres database as well as using Redis here for caching and as a queue backend. And then also there are containers running for JavaScript and CSS. Maybe you're using something like ES build for JavaScript as well as Tailwind or Bootstrap or something like that for CSS. And you just want to be able to have these things incrementally get updated when you make changes to files on your file system. But in addition to that too, right, it's all sorts of different things about database and caches or whatever. You know, maybe this project is using Postgres version uh, 17. Maybe another one is using 16. Maybe the next project that you make is going to use 18, right? You want different versions of Postgres for all these different pro projects here. And you also want to make sure too that it's like when I have this this project shared somewhere, either maybe I'm deploying it to production or, you know, I'm giving it to a friend or maybe it's open source somewhere, or maybe you're giving it to a contract worker or an employee. You want all of these things to be able to be up and running pretty quickly in a seamless way you know, independent of whatever operating system that uh, they might be using. For example, maybe someone is on Mac OS, maybe someone else is running native Linux, maybe someone is using, you know, WSL2 with Windows. And yeah, having all of this stuff together here in Docker Compose is super nice because, you know, again, I can't go into gory details about everything. I've done all sorts of different videos about some of these details here. But if you look at the Compose file here, you know, we saw some of those services that are being run. We have things like Postgres and Redis, etc. It's really nice to use Docker Compose kind of just to help facilitate running all of this, right? You know, even if your application were Dockerized and you weren't using Docker Compose, uh, maybe you were just running raw Docker commands, it would still be super annoying to like set up Docker networks and then manually run a, a, you know, a Docker command for Postgres and Redis and you know all the other things that you need here. So yeah, Docker Compose is amazing for setting all of that up. Actually, I've done a video pretty recently in the past, I'll leave a card for that one, just on why I like using Docker Compose in production. Of course, that implies also using it in development as well. I really do think there is a lot of value in having dev prod parity when you can. So yeah, having all of that set up is uh, quite nice here. You know, basically you just, you know, compose, build, and then up your project. And then anybody can just follow along without needing to worry about installing specific programming runtime environments and things like that. But I'm sure you know some of the advantages of Docker already. But yeah, with that said, you know, it's probably going to do it for this video. We'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have in the comments below. You know, hopefully it just gets you to think a little bit more about, you know, the types of things that you need to or would like to put into Docker when it comes to running your application. I've actually done more in-depth videos about things like creating a 12-factor for application, which could help you towards just modifying some of your application code to make it a little bit more container friendly. So I'll leave a card to that one if you want to check it out. Well, yeah, if you like this video, uh, please give a thumbs up. It really does help a lot. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video.